Hello, welcome to the workroom. You must be the new recruit. Welcome to your very first day here. Allow me to take your coat. It's funny, I have one just like this. You can set your shoes down just there if you feel like taking them off. No worries if you don't. I hope you didn't have too much difficulty finding this place. I know it can be a little bit difficult to find, but please come into the workroom. But before we get started with the actual tour, you need a cup of tea. Here we have Cesario down here on the floor. Hello, sir. Do you care to say hello to our guest? Hello. We have a little kitchen space over here, which you are welcome to make use of whilst you are here. Tea things, snacks, all just up here, but I'll put the kettle on. But before we get started with anything, I am going to ask you to wash your hands just because we do handle a lot of light, white, clean, delicate fabrics as we work with our hands, as well as handling any extant garments or extant research materials that we have laying around here, which we'll see in just a minute. Thankfully, our sponsor for today's video, Blue Land, can help us with that. Blue Land offer a range of hand and surface cleaning products specializing in clean ingredients and reusability. Unlike a lot of household soaps and cleaners, which are sold in annoying single-use plastics, Blue Land comes in tablet form, and with just one tablet needed per refill, that is a lot of money and plastic saved on individual soap bottles. I got the Hand Soap Duo, which comes with two reusable glass dispenser bottles and 12 deliciously scented refill tablets that dissolve and are ready to use in minutes. I've been using these products in the workroom for a few months now and have really been loving them. They leave my hands feeling clean and most importantly, dirt and oil free. So I am ready to get to work. Blue Lance products are EPA certified, are all vegan and cruelty free and are made without ammonia, VOC, soy and nut, chlorine bleach and parabens. And bonus times, all products and packaging are made without single use plastics with tablet wrappers being compostable. Click my link below to get 20% off your first kit with shipping to the UK US, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. I don't know what kind of tea you like, but there's loads of different kinds of teas in here. You can take your pick. I am still waiting on a couple of things to come in from New York. One of those being my old tea chest, which I absolutely loved. It was basically the same as this, but the thing that I loved about that one is that it had labels on the front where you could actually label what tea you have. So, I mean, I don't know what you like. Regular teas in here. I personally am a big fan of chamomile. Anyway, minor prerequisites aside, allow us now to get on with the rest of our tour. We are in this absolutely stunningly beautiful Victorian building. As soon as I came to view this unit and I saw these big Gothic windows, that was the deciding factor. I was like, this is it. I am so lucky to have this space for as long as I can have it. So we entered the workroom through here and we are greeted with this wonderful space. This is sort of like the set, the space that you see the most of on video because I have put the most effort into this part of the room. Things are constantly moving and changing around just based on what video I'm filming and how that video needs to be set up and how the shot needs to look. So one of the reasons it has taken me nearly a year to do this workroom tour is precisely because it has never felt finished and I have realized that it never will be finished. First of all, it does take months for certain things to arrive from overseas. If you are moving internationally, that is one of the <laughs> challenges that one has to deal with. There is also the reality that one's space is never really finished and I don't think it ever really should be finished just because I mean just as a person continues to grow and develop and your tastes change and refine so does the space around you and I think it should. There is also the very practical reality that you cannot just go and acquire everything that you need at one time. When I moved here from New York I was moving here with no furniture. I did not take any of my furniture with me because it, that would have been really expensive. The one thing that I did take with me is the cutting table surface and I only took that because it is flat and that could just sort of slide in amongst the boxes. But for the most part I tried to buy as much as I physically could on eBay and Facebook Marketplace. When I was moving here I told myself because books are heavy I may only bring the absolute essential books that I need to survive. Running total of 97. <laughs> I don't really like to put books on my shelves that I have not thoroughly read cover to cover. 
So these are the books that I have read cover to cover and that I know inside out and that I can at a quick moment of need grab. Oh, hey, there was this bit of information in this book. Let me just grab it. recognize some of the little antique bits and pieces that have been acquired around here. First of all, my absolute love, my delight, my hand-turned sewing machine who's been with me now for the entirety of this YouTube channel. I bought her just before I started this channel. There was no way I was not bringing her with me. She unfortunately has had a little bit of a rough move and something's gone with her tension or with her stitching or something, so I have to go take her to someone to have a look at her, which was actually the perfect catalyst to get me to actually start using the treadle machine, which is something that I acquired since I've been here, if you've been with me since the New York work workroom. I did not have space for a treadle machine at all. It's something that's been on my absolute dream want list, but was not something that I was actively thinking about. I also wouldn't have been able to bring it with me had I had one in New York, because these things are large and heavy, very, very heavy. So I was very, very lucky to find this one on eBay. I wasn't even planning to buy a treadle machine straight away, but I just saw this one come up on eBay for a really good price and it looked like it was going to work. I have a whole video on this machine, the whole story of it, over somewhere else on the channel. I can link that somewhere. I did have to do a little bit of tension adjusting, a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of reworking, but she works. And that was very, very lucky. I would never go back to an electric machine now just because this machine is so natural, like we speak each other's languages, we get each other, so I'm, I'm very excited to have her. I also found this antique chair on eBay as well, which I'm super excited about. And then I have some of my antique finds, which once again, if you join me on that antiquing adventure, I found this little kettle stand. I have not actually tried to make her work. One thing that I was really excited about with these bookshelves, when I first got them in, they looked a bit plain, and I was like, what can I do to make these a little bit more spicy, a little bit more dark academia, hashtag aesthetic trash. The realization occurred to me that I can actually have plants now that I'm not spending half of my year in another country. So I immediately went and bought tons of ivy. Ivy is one of my favorite plants. I think it just looks so, it adds so much texture to a room that I, I really, I really love it. The other thing that I was really, really keen to do, so I don't know if this is like how common knowledge this is, but basically the old cotton library, they would put Greek busts on top of the bookshelves to differentiate, to basically say like, it's this bookshelf. But that is to say, that is a thing that I wanted to do myself when I had my own two sets of bookshelves. Not that I'm going to be citing like where these books are coming from. They do shift shelves a lot based on my own whims of organization, but that's something, just, just, just a little historical nod that I wanted to do on in my own space. So I bought two little Greek busts. They are a little bit smaller than I thought they would be. I bought them on Etsy. So, you know, they weren't like actual proper antique Greek busts that are like this big. I very specifically, and this was a bit of a challenge, wanted to find women. I've got Artemis and Minerva, obviously two of my favorites. I mean, they also inevitably add the perfect dark academia touch to the space, which is always a plus. Oh yes, over here we have our Edwardian dress form lady. This was a very kind gift from my friend Hannah, who got her as part of a lot of old antique clothes and didn't know what to do with her. So I've given her a home. I love her so much. She's not really usable. She's not really easy to pin into. I have endeavored, of course, obviously, before I had a dress form and I just felt the whim to drape a thing one night. It's not the easiest thing to work with, but she makes excellent decoration. And again, she's part of this set, so. Here, of course, we have our spinning wheel friend, which once again was a very impulsive late night eBay purchase. But once again, it was one of those things that I had wanted for so long, but didn't have space for in my New York space and just happened to stumble upon the perfect thing at the right price and just bought it. <laughs> this is for spinning wheel folk. This is an antique Saxony wheel. It has come already basically threaded up double drive, which is what you need to spin flax, which is what I have been endeavoring to do. So there will be a whole separate video coming on that. This is a fake Tiffany lamp. I love Tiffany lamps so much. One day I shall own a real one, but this one's fake for now. I of course have my broomstick back here, which used to just function as purely decoration when I had it in New York. Nowadays, it functions mostly as a distaff. Back here, we have a little secret room 
that goes to storage. It's not so secret, there's obviously a door that leads here, but I just store spare fabric, costumes, film supplies in this closet. Here's the bathroom if you need to use that. And then in here is just extant garments, old magazines, old books, old things that I don't want to have out in the daylight on my bookshelves, but that need a nice quiet, it's very cold in here, cold place in which to not deteriorate. So here we have the main workspace, and this is where I do a lot of my overhead shots. These drawer leg things, it was very difficult to find two antique sets of drawers that were the perfect height, had the right amount of drawers, and that also there were two of them that matched. That was not expected to happen. I did have to buy these new, but thankfully they are made to look old, so they do fit with the aesthetic. But in here, I can store all manner of really fun stuff. In here, I keep my spinning supplies, so fiber, carding, brushes, sewing supplies, uh, sewing tools, I should say, live in here, safety pins, shears. Up here is the very boring and anachronistic tech drawer in which I keep cameras, spare parts, audio, microphone, lights. Down here is like sewing bits and hardware. So I've got buttons, false flowers, boning, aglets, hooks, millinery supplies. And then in the drawer below, I've got trimmings, all my ribbons, laces, cords, all that fun stuff. Here's the cutting table. For the most part, it is high enough to accommodate standing height. However, sometimes if you have poor skeletal structure like I do, you do need to sit down. So I did have to acquire a chair of respective height. I was actually able to find this old pub stool, which looks a little bit old-ish, but is not antique. It serves its purpose and it doesn't stick out, which is kind of the best I could hope for. Back here, we have our cabbage cauldron, some scraps waiting to be turned into coleslaw. My cabbage patch, the actual basket that I keep cabbage in, lives under the cutting table, but this is where I cut up the bits that are too scrappy to, like realistically, I'm never going to reuse something like this. So this just gets put in a pile as I work on my projects and I will eventually cut it up into coleslaw, which I use as stuffing for the occasional project that requires some stuffing. Cauldrons, as wonderfully witchy aesthetic as they are, were historically just crockery effectively. So they do exist quite prevalently online and you can find them on eBay for quite cheap sometimes. 10 out of 10 recommend using old cauldrons as practical storage materials. I've got my ironing set up here, just the ironing board with the electric iron, um, which is distinctly non-aesthetic, which is why it lives back here in this corner. Anyway, I am very pleased to introduce you to my new friend, Little Bernadette, she's not actually littler than me because she is exactly the same size as me. This is something that I really should have done ages and ages ago, and that is acquire a custom dress form that is exactly me. I know there are lots of like ways to do it yourself. There's bootstrap patterns and there's the duct tape method and there's the Morgan Donner method. I just have never got myself to spend my time making a dress form over making a garment. Fortunately, there is a company called Beatrice Forms, not sponsored by the way, not gifted, not free product, but they are a really fantastic small business. The two of them make the dress forms all themselves. They send you a kit and they make you download an app on your phone where you basically scan yourself and they get a three-dimensional version of who you are. They basically make that IRL. So I'm very much looking forward to actually being able to properly fit stuff now. On this side of the drawers, we have thread over here, more thread than what can fit on the mantelpiece. In here is literally just nothing. Um, manuals for the drawers and old parts. Here we have all of the ironing supplies, which is super convenient to have right next to the iron. So hems, spray bottles, tailors, clappers, starch, etc. So this is a steam iron. It is supposed to have that reservoir that hangs, but I'm kind of afraid to drill into the walls. One of the really cool things about this building and including this unit is that it has been so adapted throughout its life. So it's got the old structure and it's also got stuff that has been put in over the years. And you can kind of go around and do a little bit of Sherlocking to find out what was put in where. So this wall here, this is an original wall and you can feel it's, it's not stone, but it feels like, but you can actually go around and like tap on all of the walls. So for example, you can actually see, I mean, just logistically, like there used to be an archway here. I don't know where this led to, but this has been covered in with drywall. So you can tap on these and this solid sounding, but these are drywall. 
So these have been filled in at some point. Again, I have no idea where those arches led to. I don't even really know what this room was originally. I've done so much research onto the history of this building, what exists, because people just don't remember where a lot of the archways go to. But I've been really excitedly getting in touch with my neighbors, some people who have done extensive research on the building and it's just been so interesting. The fireplaces are apparently original to the building but they don't work anymore, they've been blocked off. So sadly I don't have a fireplace, a working fireplace, but I do think the history of the structure of this building and how it's constructed and adapted over time is just the most magical thing. Anyway, I'm getting way off topic. So returning to our drawers, we do have ironing stuff in this top drawer, which I have not hung the ironing reservoir because I'm too afraid to drill into the walls of this. I don't like, maybe the drywall would be okay, but th this is not drywall and I don't know what it is and I'm afraid to put holes in it. I have actually found that I don't really need the steam though. When I thought about it logically, I realized that historically they didn't use electric steam irons. They would just splash the fabric with water, which I've now put in a spray bottle, but this is what I use if something needs to be like hardcore pressed. I'll just spray it a bit with water and then press over it and it's been perfectly fine. I haven't needed the steam at all. There was really no better place for this chair, so it just kind of lives in this corner and it has become one of those chairs that just accumulates things, but it's actually become my chair of impending projects. Things that are in process, things that are obviously have fabric and designs and are ready to go, projects that are in process, things that are ready to be sewn up and that I don't really want to like put away because I will be working on them. This half of the room is a bit of a behind the scenes area. This whole sofa set, it's absolutely beautiful. It is not mine, it came with the unit, so I had to kind of work around this. But it actually wasn't so bad because I don't have a sofa set, I don't have a place to sit down otherwise. So I was actually quite glad to have this already here, already taken care of, just one less expense that I have to tackle right now. This is what I've come up with. There's a little like chill area over here, like a green room, I suppose. If and when I have guests over, we actually have a place to sit down that is not on the floor as I used to do when I was in New York. Welcome to the workroom, please have a seat. I've got a little tray there of mending, which I will work on on my lunch break. It's a nice place to sort of just sit and chill and hang out when I don't want to be actively sort of on set working. As you can see, we come around to the kitchen area again, just back here. Cesario lives just down here on the floor next to my desk, which is very nice. I wanted him to be in the center of the room because the little man loves attention. He is a little puppy dog. Finally, we come to the desk, which is probably perhaps one of my favorite parts of this room because it is, it is such the perfect desk. The desk that I have always longed to have one of these big, chunky, antique ones. Again, this one I found on Facebook Marketplace along with the chair, it came with the chair. This was probably the biggest challenge to set up in this room because as you can see, I've got this partition wall here and on it is mounted this big TV, which I, I am a millennial. I watch everything on my computer. I could not take it out, unfortunately. It's like bolted to the wall and it took me a while to figure out what I was going to do with it. I thought about getting one of those beautiful like dressing screens. That or I could like make elaborate curtains to go over it, which wouldn't have a further purpose. So a couple of weeks ago, I came up with the brilliant solution to just drape ivy in front of it. And I think this has been a very successful solution. And I've only just sort of set this up. I am going to get a big piece of linen or some sort of cloth and put it underneath. Once again, I have decorated my desk space with my precious pig portraits, very masterfully rendered by my sibling who has taken this upon themselves to make this an annual tradition of painting pig portraits. And I mean, great, I will gladly have a gallery wall, but this is Lady Liza. That is Lord Cesario. They are precious possessions, both the pigs and the portraits. Therein concludes the tour of the workroom. I hope you will be able to find your way around now and accomplish whatever you need to accomplish here. And more importantly, I hope that you feel very much at home here. It has evolved into this perfect, cozy little pocket of time travel, which I just absolutely adore. And it will, as expected, continue to evolve further in the future. So thank you very much for coming in. I have to get back to work now. You feel free to do as you wish, but I will see you in the next video.
Oh, and before anyone requests a Chatelaine tour, I shall oblige you there. I've got my handy dandy candle taser, <laughs> as we so delightfully call it. I love this thing so much. I know it is not historically correct or historically aesthetic, really, and I far prefer it to matches, but also those big plastic fluid lighters, those I mean, when they run out, you kind of can't really do anything but throw them away, and that used to upset me greatly. So this is a USB rechargeable electric lighter. So basically, you just flip it on, then you can just flip this up. It reveals these little electrode things that then passes a little electrical current. And that basically like tases the wick into a flame. And the best part is that when the electricity runs out, it can just literally be recharged. And you have this that you can continue using forever, basically. In the same vein, I also carry around, this is a candle snuffer, which I've stuffed other things in because otherwise it makes a ton of noise. Expected pair of scissors, my keys. And then for today, because we are walking around and we are filming, I've got my mic pack. Welcome to the 21st century. Oh, and very unaesthetic, but here is my <laughs> epic charging station of doom. I've got three cameras that I usually use, one primary and then two little vloggy cameras. So those all have battery chargers. Highly necessary, but not the most pretty to look at. So it just sort of lives in this back corner here. Pretend you don't see this in future videos, but it's there. 